Hi, I'm Norman A. Hood, financial advisor and host of the Exit Plan Show. I normally interview America's top advisors, but today I have a treat for you. I'm going to interview an advisor that's been doing this longer than anyone I've ever met. We're going to talk to Stuart Welch in Birmingham, Alabama. And this, this gentleman is 97 years old and he's still going strong in the life insurance business. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Really, it's really a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. I'm going to start out, and I just want you to tell our audience a little bit about how you got started in business and ended up in the life insurance business. Well, thank the Lord for that. I was sort of destined to work in the pipe yard or somewhere where I worked in the summers, I guess. And my father bought a $2,000 policy on me with this guy with National Life of Vermont. Uh huh. And so he was showing me how, I was just out of college, he was showing me how that he made 3800 the first year. Well, at that time, the mm -hmm. Loreola School made about 100 a month, so I was doing pretty good. Yeah. Me. And now, later on, I realized they don't pay by the month, so he probably wasn't telling me the truth. <laughs> and I didn't go to work for him. And then I uh, went with, started going to New York Life, and I mm -hmm. regret I didn't do that. You know, they had them right now. That, I'd have a pension of over a million if I worked for them. They had a thing called the Nile. Oh, sure, absolutely. Piled on. Yeah, I understand. And, but anyway, then uh, I went to the Army five years. Well, I went to work for a protective life mm -hmm. for one year, and then I was in the Army five. Then I came back, went to protective for about four or five years, mm -hmm. and then went for, I had a chance to go as general agent for Connecticut or uh, Northwestern. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I went with Connecticut and I okay. was there about 12 years. Okay. And Good company. And I was, I was having a hard time to devote my time to other people working as hard as I did. Yep. And so I, I <laughs> been, was doing been there. For myself in a way. <laughs> but, but I was sort of in the middle of, mm -hmm. I wasn't, I was embarrassed but not badly for my performance because mm -hmm. I was, you know, I wasn't at the top, you know. Yeah, you were doing a lot of time, spent a lot of time managing. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. What caused you to choose the life insurance business? Well, I, I don't know. This I was always a good worker, and I, and I was looking for more, some way to do well. Mm -hmm. And if I hadn't done that, I'd have to be in the building business or something mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. And I'm not too good at details, but anyway, I, anyway, I was uh, I was always uh, accepted by people as being honest and sincere, mm -hmm. which that's I important think shows and people trusted me and mm -hmm. and 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 I enjoyed helping people I really now I help I really am not getting paid money but you know are helping them get what they should do okay. and there's a lot of uh, a lot of changes happened in that mm -hmm. and we used to feel totally secure as what we sold now we mm -hmm. we don't know what's going to happen and I think right. the insurance company is in a bad spot mm -hmm. and the world's in a bad spot and mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it uh, shifts my emphasis from uh, being real comfortable with loading money in mm -hmm. as compared to buying protection. Right. I started in the life insurance business 40 years ago. 40? 40 years ago. Okay. And, and I got in it because, uh, for one thing, my wife and I were getting married in two months and I didn't have a job. So uh -huh. they offered me a job and I thought, well, I'll do this and, it, you know, I can be looking for something else while I'm doing it. Uh -huh. Well, I, like you, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed helping people and I enjoyed having, you know, doing something that could have an impact yeah. on a family's life. And I'm sure you've got, you, you probably got hundreds of stories of yeah, families you know, you've had. But I didn't, early on, I would, so I would sweat when I was going to see somebody, uh -huh. thinking I didn't, mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't feeling the comfort level mm -hmm. that I would have. Mm -hmm. I'd so go it, over. it was, uh, it was a driving, mm -hmm. But it was a hard thing to start in, really. I don't know if you find it that hard. Yeah, I used to drive around the block. First, I remember the first appointment I went on. Yeah. I drove around the block about six times, hoping they wouldn't be home. Hoping you'd give, give out a gas so you yeah. to go again. Yeah, but they were home, and, yeah. and, and they, were, they became customers and that yeah. sort of thing. We deal with a lot of business owners. 
we in our in, on the exit plan yeah. show a lot of our clients are business owners and we deal with advisors who work with business yeah. owners like like your son yeah. Stuart works with a lot of business owners to help them you know work with yeah. their finances and stuff if you were going to give a business owner a tip about how they could protect their business using life insurance what would that tip be i don't know the answer without knowing the situation okay well let's uh let's say it's a let's say it's a let's say it's a people keep people should be insured okay if they're valuable Mm -hmm. and if i were doing that today i would give them a big term policy Mm -hmm. that could be maintained Mm -hmm. and i would i would try to uh, Stuart does a good job of just making them feel like part of the thing mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, part of the deal is like mm-hmm. a partnership. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, you know, I've, I've talked to people like we had one family that had a big business mm-hmm. in and sold that stuff nationally. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about selling it. This was my way back for a couple of minutes. I had no experience in this, but I projected what he was doing and way being 10 years he's going to be worth 10 million instead of two right and so sort of, and the fact that he could keep his family to in a small town keep right. his family together mm-hmm. and keep them employed in something that they were interested in with. and they put in an east side to build a oh yeah building but we're going benefit of that mm-hmm. and they're still in business but uh and so it's just sort of where you you know what you find it in mm-hmm. if you don't serve yourself too prominently you can serve them balance so I, I can be unselfish I, maybe i couldn't have in the first year i don't know but anyway <laughs> who time survived that, that, that <laughs> eat. but anyway i wasn't married either mm-hmm. um, so uh, that's i had a lot of people that were you know responsible for my success mm-hmm. okay great great interview yeah good tip and, uh, yeah I, I, and I didn't didn't do as good a job as I really could should have done you know well I think you probably did a pretty good yeah. job you're still <laughs> okay. doing it too <laughs> okay I should have done better and then Stuart came along and I didn't I really talked to him every day but we didn't you know, and he did a great job mm-hmm. on his own, mm-hmm. which I was real proud of. Yeah, he, he, well, you a lot should of be. Time people would right. uh, piggyback a little bit too much, mm-hmm. but I always liked working. I worked hard, two papers, made two fifty a week for three years, working the backyard, in the shipyard, doing mm-hmm. while I was in school, mm-hmm. and uh, and I've always liked working. You know, mm-hmm. I always had a shovel. With a, wheelbarrow in front of it or something do mm-hmm. be doing something so mm-hmm. I was extra active mm-hmm. and you know I went in I'd say I told people I went to every act, attic in Birmingham <laughs> trying to sell them <laughs> well I think you've done a little bit of I, thank oh, you very okay. thank you very much it's, it's okay, been a pleasure fine. thank you for what you're doing <laughs> That was Stuart Welch, and he had a really good tip for if you're a business owner, your your employees uh, sometimes are your most important asset, and uh, follow his advice and make sure you are adequately protected. And in the event you lose uh, the backbone of your business, which is can be your key employees. Thanks again for joining us.